The safe handling of compressed gases starts before the gases even get to the facility. When cylinders containing compressed gas are delivered, a responsible person should confirm that the cylinder's contents are properly labeled with what is expected in the order. For example, if a factory is expecting chlorine to be delivered, the cylinder shouldn't be labeled as hydrogen. Cylinders that arrive with no labeling at all should never be accepted into a building. This person should also visually inspect the cylinder for any damage. Valves should be in place and in working order with the valve protection cap. Finally, the safety data sheet for each cylinder must be obtained, checked, and kept on file. Once the cylinders have been received, they will need to be properly stored. Compressed gas cylinders should be stored in cool, dry, level, well-ventilated areas and fire-resistant areas. All storage areas should meet the specifications of what is being stored, as well as following local, state, and federal regulations. Storage must also comply with Compressed Gas Association standards. Compressed gas cylinders need to be kept away from heat sources and shouldn't be stored in direct sunlight or anywhere that the temperature could reach about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Cylinders should include a pressure relief system to prevent explosion in the case of built up or excess pressure due to fire or high temperatures. All compressed gas cylinders must be stored upright and secured appropriately. The use of bungee cords, zip ties, ropes, and wires isn't an acceptable means of securing cylinders. Cylinders shouldn't be stored near elevators or gangways or other places where objects can fall on them. They also shouldn't be stored near hallways, exits, and entrances or heavy traffic areas where unauthorized personnel could tamper with them. Once in the appropriate storage area, the names and hazards of each gas must be posted and cylinders must be separated and stored by hazard class. For example, flammable gases shouldn't be stored near oxidizers. Once the cylinder is empty or not in use, the valves must all be closed with the valve protector cap in place and the regulator removed. Empty cylinders should be labeled empty and stored separately from the full ones. Sometimes it's necessary to transport cylinders from one location to another. Doing so requires certain precautions to keep everyone safe. All connected equipment including regulators and piping should be removed and all valves secured before transport. Never drag or roll compressed gas cylinders to move them. Only an appropriate cart or hand truck should be used. It's always important to assume that a cylinder is full when moving it, even if it's marked as empty. This is a better safe than sorry situation. Only one cylinder should be moved at a time. If it's necessary to move more than one, a two-cylinder car can be used and both cylinders need to be properly secured first. Now that we've gotten the compressed gas cylinders stored where we need them, how do we safely use them? The first step is making sure they're properly installed by the supplier or someone on site who's trained to do so. Any personnel using compressed gas cylinders must be trained on all proper use and handling techniques. These include labeling and using pressure relief valves. Before using the compressed gas cylinder, read all label information and the safety data sheet for each cylinder. All fittings should be tested for leaks using a soap solution. This might go without saying, but an open flame should never be used to test for leaks. Cylinder valves should always be accessible. It's finally time to use the compressed gas. Cylinders must always be used in well-ventilated areas. Tubing should be checked regularly for integrity and any damaged tubing must be removed immediately. Cylinders shouldn't be emptied below 25 PSI to prevent backflow of air or other contaminants. The Compressed Gas Association recommends wearing personal protective equipment like gloves, goggles, and protective clothing to minimize the risk of injury when using cylinders. Unfortunately, despite all the precautions, accidents do sometimes happen. So what do you do in case of an emergency associated with compressed gas? First, make sure to review and understand all emergency procedures ahead of time so you'll know just what to do if needed. Fire extinguishers should always be available and accessible. Make sure you know at least two paths of exit in case of a fire. One path might be blocked, so be ready to use the other one. Eye wash and emergency showers must be nearby and tested regularly. If a leak is detected, tell a supervisor immediately, warn others, and evacuate. If skin comes in contact with refrigerated liquefied gases, thaw the area immediately using lukewarm water and seek medical attention. Remember, if all else fails, stay calm and call 911. Following safe handling and use precautions is the best way to safely use compressed gas cylinders and hopefully prevent emergencies from happening.